In the last episode, we talked about the size and shape of an engineering team. So today, we're going to look at the person at the heart of that team, the tech lead. This is Software Engineering Explained. Before we get started, please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the rest of the series. Previously, we talked about the technical, product and delivery elements of an engineering team. We discussed how many people are in the technical team and what their role is. So now we need to understand exactly what they're doing and how each role fits into the wider team. The first role to understand is the tech lead because they are the bridge between the engineers and the rest of the business. So let's have a look and find out why they're so important. The tech lead is probably the most important person in the team to get right. It is their job to oversee all the technical work in the team and to ensure the right thing is built in the right way. They need to oversee the developers to ensure the code is correct. They need to work with testers to design and plan the test strategy. And they are responsible for architecture, managing cloud environments and getting releases out the door. In addition to all of their technical work, you would also expect to see your tech lead working with the business and users on requirements. It's their job to steer the product design to something that's realistic and practical for the team to build. Now this sounds like a lot for one person, but one of the most common causes of problems within a team is when the tech lead is not covering all of this. The tech lead is a single point of contact and decision maker for all things technical. As a result, they need to know everything to be able to make the right decision. We commonly see problems arise when parts of their role are split off into other teams, for example, architecture or testing. If these elements are moved away, it can create confusion over who the decision makers are and the wrong information can be shared. Sometimes it can even cause a power struggle between teams. First, a tech lead has to be a good engineer. Their job is to lead the development team, so they have to have the respect of the other engineers. To do this, they need to be hands-on with the code. If they are not an experienced and expert engineer, then they won't make a good tech lead. In most cases, they need to know a bit of everything. If the team does APIs, then they need to know how to design and build them. If the team does front-end, they need to know the common tools and frameworks. If the team does DevOps, then the tech lead will need to understand that as well. They don't have to be an expert in everything, but they need to know enough to be able to talk about it and have meaningful input into discussions. Second, they need to know about architecture. Nowadays, the tech lead will be managing the design of the system they're building. Modern architecture is not like the old approach when dedicated architects would generate mountains of design documents. Today, Architecture is normally an API spec and some diagrams. The tech lead needs to come up with a logical, simple design that the team can deliver. Third, they need to be a good communicator. The tech lead will need to work closely with the business stakeholders and other teams. That means they need to be able to explain what they're doing and why they're doing it in the way that they are and defend the approach if needed. They need to ensure the team's dependencies are prioritized by other groups, and they have a good grasp of all the moving parts of a project. This skill set is hard to find, and many good senior engineers struggle to make the move to tech lead. For a lot of engineers, the move to tech lead is a first step into management, so just being the best engineer isn't enough anymore. When looking for the tech lead, it's important to find somebody with people skills as well as technical. So what does a day in the life of a tech lead look like? Well, it depends a lot on the organization, but in general, the day will be divided into technical and non-technical work. Typically, the day will start with a stand-up where the entire team can discuss the work of the day and a tech lead will provide input into how the team should be approaching problems. During this meeting, the tech lead will identify areas that need help and work out how best to provide it. Then the tech lead will have a calendar to manage. 
Like everyone, the tech lead needs to attend meetings and work with the wider business. A good tech lead will be trying to limit their meetings to those that they really need to attend. A meeting should help the team or business to succeed and it should need the tech lead themselves to attend. Most businesses have cross-team status meetings and reporting sessions that the tech lead may wish to delegate, but they may need to attend a technical team huddle or architecture review or business planning meeting. The rest of the time is for technical work. This could be coding or supporting and coaching others. It could also be code reviews or technical design. It's important for the tech lead to avoid ending up on the critical path for too many things. If the tech lead is needed for some coding, but they're in a meeting, it could slow down the entire team. Instead, the tech lead needs to hand that work to a senior engineer and only take on the work that they actually have time for. One of the skills of a good tech lead is to manage the meetings and calendars to keep it to a minimum and to group meetings together so that longer periods of technical focus can be achieved. A day too full of meetings will be busy but unproductive, but equally a tech lead who's not attending any meetings is out of the loop. Finding that balance is the main challenge of a good tech lead. At the end of the day, there should be a chance to catch up with the team and discuss progress and problems that have arisen. And this will then lead into the planning for the next day or the next week. The tech lead will face constant challenges on time. It's their job to make sure that they focus on the activities that will help drive the team forward and achieve their goals. If you're creating an engineering team, then the tech lead is one of the first roles to hire. Even at an early stage, the tech lead will be providing input on the design to help with technical efficiency and highlighting any constraints early on. As you move forward into building the project, your tech lead will need to have all the early design knowledge to guide the team on why it's been designed in the way that it has and how the design will impact the end users. Since the tech lead is so important, they need to be one of the first people in the team and they will help to shape the team around the project. In general, you want to hire somebody with a record of success as a tech lead. If it's someone's first role as a tech lead, then ask them about what they've done in their previous projects beyond just coding. In the beginning, most of their role will be communication, so they need to be ready for that. In most successful projects, the common thread is an experienced, capable tech lead who can guide those around them. The tech lead should be the most expensive role in your team, but it's money well spent if you can put that technical side in their hands and let them run with it. This has been a look at the role of the tech lead. Next time, we will look at the engineers, the largest but often most misunderstood group of your team.